Oh no! Stay back! You know, I can't even pretend to be that mad about this. Thanks. MSI sponsored this video to show off a couple of laptops that are built around what might be the single most exciting thing that I've seen out of Intel in years. Core Ultra Series 3, aka Panther Lake, is here and yes, you're a good Mr. Kitty, aren't you? Let's start with the big picture. The new XE3 integrated GPU in Panther Lake is up to 50% faster than last gen, which if you guys remember, was already shockingly competitive with AMD's top mobile gaming APUs. This could be a stunning upset. And there's more. Intel boasts 50% lower power in multi-threaded loads at similar performance compared to last gen. Are you kidding me right now? Again, guys, I remind you, this is compared to a platform that already managed over 20 hours of battery life in some designs. The other big one, if you care about consumer choice and costs, is flexibility. And you can see that clearly on display in the machines that MSI has us showing off here today. Both the Prestige series and the newly redesigned Stealth Gaming laptop are equipped with a 16 core Core Ultra 9 CPU. And yet, this one has high speed soldered LPDDR5X memory and a whopping 12 core XC3 GPU, while this one uses sodium memory for easy user upgrades and a smaller GPU core since it's going to be paired with up to a mobile RTX 5090 anyway. More on these later though. First, I want to talk about how Intel's modular approach to this platform starts way down at the chip level. If you look closely at this Prestige Series motherboard, there are fine lines between the various modules that make up the Panther Lake SoC. And Intel sent over these great slides that show exactly what it is that we are looking at here. At the top left, we've got their largest CPU module with a total of 16 cores. To the right is an IO die that contains PCI Express, USB, networking, Thunderbolt, that sort of thing. Above and below that are filler dies. Then at the bottom left is an absolute unit of an integrated GPU with 12 overhauled XC3 Battle Mage cores. Intel has a total of three different Panther Lake configurations to meet different needs, and they vary in the amount of CPU compute, GPU compute, and I.O. that they're equipped with. But what they all have in common is advanced packaging and high-speed die-to-die interconnects that uh, lead me to believe that this is just the beginning. Intel describes their scalable fabric as IP agnostic, which is a boring business monster way of saying that nothing would prevent a partnership with, say, NVIDIA to put a GeForce GPU right on package with Intel CPUs. And I don't know, who knows, maybe a, a RISC-V AI accelerator from Tens Torrent or something. The sky is the limit. For now, we don't have that, but Panther Lake is still packed with other exciting bits too. The new media engine supports encode and decode operations across an insane range of codecs. The new IPU looks poised to significantly improve webcam performance and flexibility for form factors that might demand more cameras. And the new NPU or neural processor is amazing, not because it has more AI tops or whatever, but because instead Intel opted to maintain the same 50 top performance from last generation while shrinking it and reducing its power consumption so they could spend that die area on other cooler things. Stellar choice, Intel. There's a whole bunch of other architectural stuff too, like the way that the bigger compute dies share level three cache between the P cores and the extra E cores, while the E cores in the low power cluster just kind of vibe on their own for maximum efficiency. Also, the thread director is better at managing task scheduling now, but yeah, you've heard enough yik yak. Let's see this thing in action. MSI actually loaded up one of their Prestige 16s with Cyberpunk for me to game on. I'm not allowed to show the FPS counter, but I am allowed to play with the settings and I am allowed to tell you guys how much FPS it feels like. Uh, was this the one? Did the battery finally die? It was running the whole time I was writing the script. <laughs> Let's load something in the city. I don't want to go easy on it. Not gonna lie, guys. There is clearly some upscaling going on here right now. And she's a little floaty. I think we've got a little bit of frame generation on. But this is a very usable experience. So we're in kind of performance mode for XCSS. Running on low. Whoa, no. Combination of low and medium. We are using frame gen. 
But we're running at 2880 by 1800. That's insane. Why would we even do that? Okay, let's turn it back down to a reasonable resolution. Can't go full screen? Uh, you know what? That's fine. We're running at 1920 by 1200 now. Now we're getting a better feel for the raw performance. If I had to guess, I'd say this is probably in the 40 to 45 FPS range. Very, very playable. And like, it's not even that loud. Like, it's hard to believe we are getting that level of performance with this cooler. Look at the thickness of this vapor chamber. And you got this tiny little heatsink array. Which raises the obvious question, are they gonna put this thing in a gaming handheld? Or are they just gonna tease me with laptops? Well, MSI wouldn't confirm anything, but I will say that the vibe felt pretty good. So I'm optimistic. For now though, the Prestige series is pretty darn shiny as far as silver medals go. MSI has completely overhauled the fit and finish of their business laptops, including more rounded edges and a new letter mark. And both the 14 and 16 inch models are available as either a traditional clamshell eh, or as a two in one with their nano pen being a pretty cool solution to never losing your stylus again. It just tucks in right here at the bottom and gets 45 minutes of charge in just 13 seconds. I think the coolest feature though might be their new action trackpad. It's really big, which is pretty neat, but it also allows you to configure better touch tool style gestures like sliding here for volume control or sliding here for display brightness. <laughs> pretty cool, right? You can even configure your own functions. Both sizes feature 16 by 10 OLED displays with the 16 inch going up to 120 Hertz variable refresh rate. And both feature Windows Hello on the fingerprint power button, as well as the webcam with its really nicely indicated privacy slider. All in all, the package is shockingly thin when you consider the performance and the IO on tap. Turns out there never was a reason to take away our USB-A and HDMI ports. The same is true of the completely redesigned MSI Stealth. Man, what a glow up this thing got. I think they finally did it. I think they finally built something that you could pull out at a business meeting without raising any eyebrows. Maybe turn the RGB off on the keyboard. Then take it back to your hotel room and game up a storm. This uses the small GPU Panther Lake with up to 16 CPU cores alongside an RTX 5060, 5070, 5080, or 5090 mobile, depending on uh, how much pain you like in your wallet region. Probably the coolest thing about this from a gaming perspective is the extra 20 watts of GPU power that MSI managed compared to their last gen, despite it being in a device that is less than 17 millimeters thick. Oh, and since we're at cool stuff, I guess the display is pretty cool too. 2560 by 1600, 16 by 10 has to be the sweet spot for pixel density and image clarity at this size. And while it doesn't support variable refresh rate, it is OLED and it does go up to 240 Hertz. I also always like to see dual Thunderbolt 4 ports and two and a half gig networking. This is a pretty sick machine for gamers and it's pretty good for non-gamers too. We get a giant trackpad, albeit without action macros, large front facing speakers and up to 100 watts of USB PD charging. So if you know that you're not going to be gaming, you can leave the bulky power brick at home. If, on the other hand, you like bulkier things, oh, yeah. they're also showing off a redesigned Raider series. Here, yeah, sure, she's a little thicker, but you'll also get up to 300 watts of total system power for its 16 core Arrow Lake CPU and mobile RTX 5090. Now, one thing we didn't see in MSI's demo room was the smallest Panther Lake. So there are still some question marks around that one, but if the bigger kitties are anything to go by, this is a big return to form for Intel and it couldn't come at a more important time. Apple Silicon has upended the laptop processor market more broadly. And on the PC side, the dual threats from AMD and more recently Qualcomm haven't gone away either. Now we just have to hope that Intel can continue to execute on this path now that they have fired the leader who put them back on the right track before even giving him a chance to see his vision come to life. But I'm not gonna think about that right now. Instead, I'm gonna think of a fun video for you to watch. How about checking out the one where I installed a new MSI gaming monitor with a fifth gen QD OLED panel that addresses both the magenta issue and the soft surface hardness of previous QD OLEDs. It's pretty sick. <laughs>